What? Really? The conference talk, the pre-recording, it's due today? Holy moly, luckily I have a new camera. I can do everything right now on this new thing, my fancy new setup. Anyways, so um, I'm going on holiday tomorrow, so this thing has to be done today. Um, I'm talking to you about FitJS and FitPress. I'm giving you a global introduction to this bleeding edge new tools for the FuGS Global Conference. Um, I am not going too deep because I know this stuff is bound to change. And you know what, Evan Yu, who built these things, is so much smarter than me. I'm probably bound to say something wrong. So I'm going to show you the basics and how they work. And then you can just give it a try yourself to see how well these new tools work. Don't use them in production yet, but it's nonetheless cool to know that they exist and how they work. All right, let's do it. All right, now that I changed camera setup, let's, um, let's rock, right? So as I said in the intro, this is a general introduction to Veet and Veet Press. But before we dive in, because this is actually a conference talk, let's talk a little bit about me, your presenter. So my name is Tim Benix. Um, I am from Amsterdam, but I currently live in Paris. And that's why um, I'm saying feet the wrong way, because the, in my language, the F and the V are very close together. But in French, the V is way um, harder, almost like a W. So I have to say feet. It's really hard for me. So please forgive me when I say it wrong, uh, dear French people. Anyways, um, I am the director of Frontend at vault um, based in Paris. And I'm a media developer expert at Cloudinary. Um, so I'm not going to talk about what those jobs are exactly. If you want to know more, just Google them. Um, let's start with Viet. I hope I say it correctly. Anyways, so um, Viet's origin was here. So it was a tweet by Evan Yu in April of this year. Um, as I was going to bed, I had an idea about a no bundler dev setup using native browser ES imports. But with the support for few SFCs with hot reload. Now it's almost 6 a.m. and I have a POC working. The hot reload is so fast, it's near instant. So when someone like Evan Yu does a tweet like this, the whole front-end community kind of goes like this. Who wants to get crazy for New Year? <laughs> because front-end is progressing. Cool stuff is happening. We're all ready to see what this genius guy has to offer us. Right, so let's talk about what Feed actually is. So Feed is a web dev build tool, which serves native ES modules during development, but it bundles them with Rollup for production. So Feed offers a no bundler setup um, that allows development with few single page um, components or few single file components. And this is where it gets a little bit special because we can all build something that just injects all your dependencies as a module script file, right? Then it just works. But you also want to sometimes transform because you want to use your few single file component or your JSX type thing. You kind of want it to be smart like that. You want it to compile things, right? So the ES import syntax is used and served directly to the browser via native script modules but the dev server intercepts and transforms the files if needed. And this is where this thing becomes so cool because it kind of does it on demand and it's really fast because of that. So um, because this stuff happens on demand, it doesn't have to pre-compile everything and then start your server like Webpack would do, right? If you have a bunch of files and you do npm start or yarn dev or whatever with Webpack, you see it compile everything, create the dependency graph and run it. With feed, this is not the case. Um, it just puts everything as a module and then on demand compiles. So therefore also hot module replacement is really fast because it only replaces a thing you just touched. It doesn't have to recompile everything, right? So it's true on demand compilation. And I went over this really fast now, not with much detail. So Evan, sorry if I interpreted it wrong a little bit, but this is kind of for the general public. I'm assuming this is enough. Right, so the cool thing is that it works with Vue, React, but also Preact, and it has TypeScript support. Because of course, it bundles Vue 3, which also has TypeScript, so good stuff. Um, the idea is um, that it kind of covers 
whatever feature set view CLI gives you. So when you want to import CSS file or SAS files, or you want to do web workers, all the kind of all the stuff that view CLI has, they're supposed to kind of follow that with feet as well, which is really cool because we are used to that amazing tool set, right? So feet kind of almost has the same. It's just more opinionated. Um, however, browser support, right? So it needs ES module support. It also uses dynamic imports on production. Um, this is kind of doable in almost all browsers. So that's why this is kind of bleeding edge, right? And it will probably never get backwards compatible to all the browsers. So it transpiles the files to ES2019 by default, but it can also go down as low as ES2015, I think, uh, during the build. So of course there is the troll IE11. Um, it just doesn't have um, the module support, the ES um, syntax, and um, the dynamic loading of files, it might be doable, but you know what, if you think about it, this is, are the people that use IE11, right? So you have the 1% of actual users, and then you have the 99% of people are basically developers trying to make IE11 work. So you know what? Let's just forget about it in this context. This is not a tool for the masses just yet. It's quite bleeding edge. So how about we do a demo? Um, I talked really fast over everything. And um, the purpose of that was to just show you so you can actually tomorrow when you are after this video, you can actually start typing it and actually work with it. Okay, let's go. It is demo time. So as you can see, I'm actually in Windows PowerShell. Um, normally when I'm on a Windows computer, I use WSL uh, Ubuntu, which is like a Linux distro on Windows. Then I feel right at home because I'm actually a Mac user, but it decided to crap out on me today. So we're in PowerShell. Let's be powerful, shall we? Okay. That also means I don't have yarn installed and I didn't want to do all that stuff and mess with settings because I don't really use this site. Anyways, I do have NPM. So let's initialize a feed app. Here we go, npm init feed app for Qjs global. Let's see what it does. Okay, so let's go into, it was pretty fast by the way. I don't know why, that was cool. Okay, npm install. Let's see what that does. It's probably not gonna be that long because I cannot imagine that much, right? We probably have a uh, few three and some other helper things. Okay, so let's open it in code first. Oh, I'm so happy this all works. Man, it could have been terrible. Okay, let's zoom in a little bit. Okay, um, we have code now. It only dependency is actually few three and some uh, few compiler and some other stuff. Um, let's actually run it. npm run dev. Whoa, that, that was pretty fast. Well, of course there's not that much code, but think how fast that was. Okay, copy, open a browser. Whoa, it works. Well, that was pretty easy, right? Of course, this this is basically an empty view, like view CLI setup. But if you think about installing view CLI and what it means to start up and compiling everything when you see that happen in Webpack, that actually doesn't happen here. This is actually super fast. Um, so let's have a look in the code to see if we can see that counter change or whatever. Like, let's check the hot module reload. So of course we have a component, hello world, and we have a counter. How about we set the counter to a start of five? Save. We go back to the browser. Oh, there it is on five. Let's start it on one. Oh, you see how fast this is? This it's like it's it's near instant. Awesome. So saved. Oh, there it is. It's I can almost not show you how fast it is. Let's go like this. Save. You see? Wow. That's just crazy. Save. Beam. It's basically like well, let's go back to the beginning. And there it is. So it's basically instant. And now this is just the normal view app. Uh, it's view three, of course, but you can do whatever you want and your whole um, development environment works. Um, let's do a quick build to see what comes out. 
Oh, and we can also, before we do that, let's have a look at that index file. Because, okay, let's go big again. There we go. So basically that index file or the main JS that it's that's bundled towards is actually a script type module, right? So um, that works really well, it's very modern. Okay, let's do a build. npm run build. Okay, so now it's just a compilation of my one component. Oh, and it also took the logo file and it took the style. So this is kind of like how Fuse CLI does it, right? It's kind of a bit of like, it kind of uses this Webpack thing, but it's way faster. It's it's the same approach, but it, it well, let's see, this is cool. So now we have a dist folder and inside the dist folder, we have an index file. And now it changed the names for obvious cache debusting stuff. And um, there's my style sheet that it extracted from the few files. There's the logo and then the index. It did whatever it needed to do to make few work with few three and everything. But um, that was a super quick demo. If I can do this, you can do this. Just start using it and see if you can make some plugins and some other stuff, because there's actually a whole bunch of stuff that goes way deeper that we didn't talk about, like making plugins. And I think this thing is gonna be the future for Fuse CLI, basically. Anyways, on to Feed Press. All right, it's time for Feed Press. Actually, as Evan Yu said, VitPress is the little brother of ViewPress. So this talk is not about what ViewPress is. Um, I'm assuming most people watching this know what ViewPress is. Um, however, if you don't know, it's like a super nice and um, super fast way to build static websites um, with Vue. And it's not like a gridsum that it's built for like fully fledged projects. It's well, it works for project, but it's really good for, let's say, uh, documentation using markdown, stuff like that. Um, when I heard the term that that's the when I heard the term that it's a little brother to Viewpress, it made me immediately think of this except one eighth your size. Breathtaking, I shall call him Mini Me. <laughs> Man, this scene is so epic. Anyways, um, so VitPress is basically ViewPress without the Webpack and it's blazing fast. It managed to do this because of course it's based on Vite and Vue 3 and it's also very opinionated. And that's the one thing we should keep in mind. It's kind of, you do it this way and then it works and therefore it's super fast, but it's not all as encompassing as ViewPress is. Maybe yet, we, we shall see. Right, so ViewPress itself is pretty slow to spin up because it has to compile all these pages that it has with Webpack. And also when you wanna change one page, the hot module replacement is pretty slow due to Webpack. Um, let's talk about the differences between ViewPress and VitePress. So of course VitePress uses Vue 3 and it has feet under the hood rather than Webpack. Um, the pages themselves are a bunch lighter um, because it has few three tree shaking and also it uses roll up, roll up for code splitting. Um, that's all nice and well, but on the other hand, it's way less configurable, I think by design actually. And also it's more opinionated. You kind of have to use it the way it was meant to, like what it was written, where few press can basically get you anywhere you want. Um, so those kind of differences, they, they don't really matter. And I don't think for now VitePress will overtake ViewPress, but they probably will just borrow features from each other moving forward. Um, so that was a really short overview. Um, how about we do a little demo? Let's set up a VitePress website. Okay, are we ready for a VitePress demo? I am. Okay, let's do something. Okay, uh, let's make a directory called VitePress. Press Vue.js global. Okay, and um, nom, 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 oh, nom, 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 Ah, bye bye. Oh, no, no. Okay, npm e minus d. Uh, feed 
press. Here we go. I hope it doesn't take too long for the lovely video. You already had to see me typing really poorly. Well, that seems to be okay. Let's let's go. We can wait for this. Yeah, yeah. Ah, wasn't that? Okay. Um, we need a markdown file, so let's just open this in code. And let's just make a new index.md. This is QJS Global. Okay, we have a markdown file now. So npx. Wow, my typing is special today. Whoa, that, oh, it's already open. Okay. Whoa, that was easy. Well, let's see if that speed is the same this time, right? So let's do this is, oh boy. Save, let's go back to the browser. Oh, there it is already. So you can see that this is, well, I'm not gonna go much further than this because this is basically few press the way you would want to work on that. Um, however, you cannot do everything the same, but the basics are there. And because it uses feet, it's so fast. Of course, it also uses Vue 3. And the way it was built, it's basically now just a um, Vue 3 application where you can do whatever you want. Um, you can do your own theming. You can probably do some plugins, stuff like that. But that's enough for now. So um, we're almost done with the talk. Thank you for watching this talk. Um, I have had the pleasure to speak on a bunch of FUGS Amsterdam conferences and I've attended them all. And they're just amazing. So thanks guys for organizing and also for inviting me back yet again. And for the people who enjoyed what I had to say, you can follow me on Twitter at Tim Benix, And you can also find me on YouTube, um, uh, also at Tim Benix, um, where I make videos such as this one, but I also do interviews or I try out new stuff or I do talk about general tech stuff in the front end community. So I would really appreciate it if you liked what you saw, that you maybe drop a like or maybe subscribe. Um, and overall, thank you very much. You've been a lovely audience. Sadly, we could not do this in person, but um, on a video like this, I still kind of feel connected because we do get some likes on the videos and some new subscribers. So we're making a community here. Anyways, thank you and I see you next time.